let's talk about uh, reviewing the apprenticeships. And, and there's three things that I wanted to, uh, to talk about. Yeah, OK, terrific. So the first thing I want to talk about is, is, is reviewing the way that employers think about apprenticeships. Then I want to, to talk about the review that's currently undergoing undergoing on the, on the way of the level three apprenticeship. And then I want to quickly mention the level five apprenticeship as well. And when I mention the level five apprenticeship, the payroll assistant manager, I will also touch on the level seven, which Kevin kindly said should be available to make up the set. And I totally agree. I totally agree. So talking about reviewing the way employers think about apprenticeships, I really do think that um, uh, apprenticeships do, uh, employers do need to, th uh, to think about the way that they approach apprenticeships because apprenticeships provide, unlike a lot of the commercial qualifications that are out there, apprenticeships provide a set of knowledge, skills and behaviours to be able to do the, 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 the role, unlike some of the commercial qualifications, as I said. They're vocational, so they take place at the workplace. They're educational as well, so they're building knowledge, but uh, to be applied in the workplace or in the, the profession. And I really do believe it's the qualification of the future. Looking at um, the uh, BBC this morning, they're talking about um, a, an obvious skills gap that we're going to have coming out of the pandemic. And this is, a, a, a apprenticeships are ideal to fill that skill that skills gap. So I do believe it's the professional qualification to have, although I recognise there's commercial qualifications um, out there as well. And importantly, with regards to the level three and the level five, they're recognised by, and I've got it in uh, inverted commas, professional bodies, because in payroll, there is no one professional body. So it's recognised by a number of different um, uh, bodies that claim to uh, be representative of the payroll profession. Now, employers, and I was talking to the Institute for Apprenticeships and Technical Education, or the IFATE, um, the, the other day, and um, my relationship manager there was, was saying that employers really do have a great and increasing role um, uh, to play in advocating the place of apprenticeships. So they should be looking at their internal, or they could be looking at their internal training requirements, saying, well, do we need a training course? Or perhaps an apprenticeship is the route for us to go. And um, what's become evident I asked the trailblazer um, for a selection of job descriptions just to prove that you know that the, the, the uh, level three and the level five do actually exist in the real world and a lot of the job descriptions that I had in say oh it's desirable that they have this particular qualification it's desirable that they have these particular letters after their name well you can get those letters after your name by taking an apprenticeship. So perhaps you should look at job specifications, look at job descriptions. And if it perhaps says um, a particular organisation, maybe change that to a particular organisation's qualification or the level three apprenticeship, the level five apprenticeship is just as valid. The apprenticeship is just as valid as any of the other commercial qualifications that are out there. So that's my bid on, on, on the role that employers can play in advocating um, the, the role of apprenticeships. Now I want to talk about the review of the level three. So um, Kevin's done an excellent job of uh, giving an outline of the level three as it is at the moment. However, it's three years old and it is being reviewed. Uh, but what I want to say right at the very start, that just because it's being reviewed does not mean that it's not available now. So the fact it's being reviewed does not affect the apprentices that are currently taking it. It does not affect the apprenticeship training providers, the ATPs, that are currently teaching on programme. And it does not affect the current endpoint assessment organisations that are assessing, so the EPAOs. So although it's being reviewed, although it will change, the apprenticeship is still very much um, alive and it can be taught and it can be assessed. And indeed, it is being um, uh, taught and it is being assessed. I heard a comment in one of the rooms that I attended um, about finding apprenticeship training providers. And that's and that's really interesting and a common question that that I get. 
And what I, if you if you search me out on LinkedIn, I did write uh, an article how how um, employers can find apprenticeship training providers. Also on the I Realize website, I wrote a white paper as well uh, about finding apprenticeship training providers. But in actual fact, if you if you just like in your your search engine, type in find apprenticeship training, and then search for payroll, it will bring up all of the apprenticeship training providers. <coughs> excuse me that are teaching the um, uh, level three and um, indeed uh, or not they're teaching the level five as well. So the, the main thing that I'm saying here, although it's been reviewed, the level three, and it's necessary that it's reviewed, and I'm supportive of the fact it's been reviewed, the level three payroll administrator apprenticeship, as it is at the moment, does carry on as normal as regards changes um, um, uh, with uh, government uh, and civil servants, everything is going to take time. So it ha I have to uh, work with the trailblazer um, and I have to say, well, how should this be reviewed? What should go in? What should come out? All, the, all that kind of thing. Um, September is the earliest that I can actually resubmit the reviewed level three. I, I really don't imagine that I'm going to submit it in, in September. So I've got a November date. Provisionally, I'm going to uh, submit it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that means that the earliest that there will be changes to the Level 3 apprenticeship is 2022. So the start of uh, next calendar year. So very much the, the Level 3 as it is now can carry on. And I am in touch with all of the apprenticeship training providers that have asked to be kept informed of what's going on. I'm in touch with all of the endpoint assessment organisations. There's currently only two that are um, assessing it. And I'm in touch with members of the profession um, as well. And I will always chat to anybody about apprenticeships and the progress of the review. So um, my, my contact details are at the end. So if you've got any queries at all, <coughs> excuse me about the apprenticeship, just get in touch. I'm always happy to, to chat. Now, why is it up for review? Well, simply the payroll apprenticeship level three, the payroll administrator apprenticeship went live, available for delivery on the 13th of June, 2018. And right at the bottom of the standard, it says to ensure that the apprenticeship continues to ref reflect employer requirements, the standard is going to be reviewed after a maximum of three years Years, or if a significant change is required. Well, things did change um, but between uh, uh, 2018 and 2021, but not significantly or not significantly enough for us to revise the standard. Um, but so essentially so it wasn't done that, but it's reviewed now because the Institute for Apprenticeships and Technical Education say it must be reviewed. So really what I, I'm saying is, the, the fact it's going to be, be, be reviewed is not going to be a surprise to apprenticeship training providers or endpoint assessment organisations. The level three payroll apprenticeship um, is not the only apprenticeship that's being reviewed. Apprenticeship training providers and endpoint assessment organisations are agile, they're flexible, they're adaptable, so they, they will be aware that it's up for review. Also, a reason that it's being uh, reviewed and kept in touch on this as well is because IFATE's policy has changed. And all you have to do, as Ken again said, is look at the level five standard, the payroll assistant manager standard, and compare that to the payroll administrator standard. And you will see that they are very, very different. So IFATE have said to me, as part of the review, which is up now, you've got to do it because it's been in existence for three years. As part of the review, the review must uh, uh, take into account the fact that our qualifications policy has changed. But what I want to stress to employment assessment organisations, to employers, to apprentices, to individuals, um, is that <clears throat> the overall intention of the apprenticeship is not going to change simply because it doesn't need to change. The intention of the apprenticeship is to bring people into the profession and equip them with the necessary skills to be an efficient payroll administrator um, in, in the profession. So the intention will not change, but it inevitably some things will change in there. 
So I just wanted to quickly run through the, the, the Trailblazer group because everybody seems to think that um, it's Ian Holloway's apprenticeship. It's absolutely not Ian Holloway's apprenticeship. I just sit in the middle coordinating the views of the Trailblazer group. Now, perhaps what I am responsible for is going to um, certain employers, certain areas of the profession and selecting who I want to be on the Trailblazer group. Now, I'm not just picking out friends. I'm not just picking out people because I like the color of their hair or something like that. I'm picking out people that are representative of the payroll profession and the different sectors in the payroll profession. So we've got private sector, we've got public sector, we've got retail, we've got accountancy, we've got bookkeeping and that kind of thing. So I'm going around making sure that my trailblazer group is as reflective as possible of the very, very diverse no, uh, uh, nature of the of the payroll profession it's no good me just looking at uh, the private sector for example because then the uh, the apprenticeship won't reflect the fact that um, payroll exists in the public sector it's no good me just looking at the agricultural sector for example because maybe it won't reflect bookkeeping maybe it won't reflect uh, reflect retail so I've got a host of people on there and I've dragged them in so they are the ones that give me views I think the apprenticeship should, should say this I don't think this should be and I think it should be assessed this way I am the one that coordinates it so really I am the one in, in the middle that does the donkey work um, these the, the, the people in the trailblazer are the ones that actually provide the thoughts and they are the ones that make it reflective of the payroll profession so i want to just go through and uh, advise apprentices apprentice, apprentice training providers important assessment organizations what is inevitably going to change so the level three that we've got now will change but the level three that we've got now is still fit for purpose and it's still being delivered the occupational profile is going to change and this is something that i'm working on <clears throat> right now with the trailblazer i'm just about to send an email out to the trailblazer because we've got to define again what uh, a payroll administrator actually is now if you look at the standard as it is it says a payroll administrator is this when in actual fact a payroll administrator in 2018 is really no different from a payroll administrator in 2021 and that's what i'm suggesting to the trailblazer however i've got a new trailblazer um some people have uh, some people have left some people have uh, joined and people have had different uh, people have got different thoughts so maybe um, the occupational profile will change. I'm hoping it won't change significantly because essentially, as I said, the payroll administrator now is the same as it was three years ago. Job titles will be reviewed. Um, if you look at the standard now, um, it says payroll um, uh, administrator, also known as in some organizations, payroll officer, payroll clerk, wages clerk, for, uh, for example. So I just need to review those to make sure, <coughs> excuse me, that the revised standard is reflective of the payroll profession as it is in 2021. And then, as Kevin touched on, I've got to look at um, uh, uh, doing away with all of the things that uh, are currently in the standard, so it's payroll technical, payroll core, regulation and compliance, pensions for payroll, all that kind of thing. I've got to look at do, uh, doing away with all of those and replacing them, because this is the way that IFATE works now, with what's called duties. And a duty is, is really something that the payroll administrator actually does in their occupation. So when you've got the payroll core, the pensions for payroll, payroll technical, all that kind of thing, they they will go um, and they will be replaced by duties. Now, to give you an example, just a very, very simple example, we will have probably about 10 or so duties, although they've got to be decided and agreed upon with the, with the trailblazer. Um, so, and, and they'll each be given a number and they'll each be given a description. So it could be that duty number one says something as simple as a payroll administrator will create payroll records. I think we'll probably elaborate that because it's, it, it's a very simple thing to just create payroll records. Because what does that actually mean? A second duty could possibly be process the payroll. And that's the uh, part where um, everybody thinks that we just press this button. Um, which is not as it is at all. So that's simple, a, a simple duties, simple descriptions. But assigned to each of the duty descriptions, 
are a number of KSBs. And Kevin talked about this. These are the knowledges, skills and behaviours that must be learned, must be evident in the apprentice to be able to fulfil the duty. So to be able to fulfil duty number one, the creation of payroll records, you must have this particular knowledge, these particular skills and these particular behaviours. So just elaborating a little bit on what the KSBs are, the knowledge, skills and behaviours to try and get, because it, because it, it is new, the knowledge is what needs to be known to be able to fulfil that uh, uh, duty, to be able to do that duty, what needs to be known. So what does the ATP, the apprenticeship training provider, not a training provider, what does the apprenticeship training provider um, need to teach effectively to, to enable the apprentice to meet that duty? And therefore, what skills, and this is the next one, what skills does the apprentice need to have to be able to apply that knowledge to fulfil that duty? And the behaviours are all to do with the, the, the characteristics, the behavioural traits, the mindset that is required of the apprentice to be able to use the skills to apply the knowledge to achieve the duty. So, for example... If we've got the simple duty, create payroll records, it could be something as simple as, well, to create a payroll record, you've got to be aware of the business and you've got to be aware of your customers and your stakeholders. You've got to understand your software, your payroll software, and you've got to understand how the payroll software carries, carries out its audit, its verification routines. So those are knowledges that have got to be taught, and that will be uh, a mixture of the apprenticeship training provider and also the employer as well. Because remember, this is a vocational qualification, and the employer cannot simply divorce themselves from uh, as I go to an apprenticeship tr uh, training provider and say, well, that's it, come back in a year and a half um, uh, with all the necessary uh, knowledge, skills and behaviours. The, the employer should be mentoring and uh, developing the apprentice at the workplace. So those are the knowledges, some which will be imparted by the apprenticeship training provider, but they can't do something like understand software because software at, at, at X company is going to be different from software at Y company. And the same with the verification um, uh, processes. So what skills does uh, an apprentice need to be able to create the payroll records? Well, they've got to have communication skills. Now, the communication skills were well necessary. Uh, it's, it's easy to commun commun communicate by email. Oh, no, we do everything online. We do everything as back that kind of thing, using the software. So you've got to understand what the software does, but you've actually got to practically, to be able to do it, create a payroll record, you've actually got to be able to use it successfully. And you've also got to have the skills of planning and prioritization. So you've got a weekly payroll in the month, you do your weekly payrolls before your monthly payrolls, your weekly payrolls are always prioritized over your, your monthly payroll, simply because you're paying on a weekly basis rather than a monthly basis. You've got to plan your workload. Um, so those are some skills that could possibly be associated with that duty of create payroll records. And then, of course, there's some behaviours, so the, the instinctive things, the mindset that the payroll administrator has to be able to perform that um, duty. So they've got to be able to build and maintain relationships with their stakeholders. Uh, to be able to gather the information. They've got to be able to look at the information that they've gathered, be able to judge it, interpret it. Is it the right information? And that's where professional scepticism comes in as well. So it's not just a question of gathering the information and plonking it into the, the payroll system. It's looking at the information and say, oh, do you know, that doesn't look right. Or I've got, oh, I've got a bit of a doubt about that. And I, I wonder if they actually mean that. But this is what we do in day-to-day -day life. We don't just don't take things at face value. So that's just an example of the KSBs. Now the KSBs exist in the payroll standard and the payroll endpoint assessment plan at the moment. So in actual fact, what we will be doing is um, adapting the existing KSBs <clears throat> to the new requirement to establish duties. Then there's this off the job days as well. So we've got, we'll have the duties, we'll assign knowledges, skills and behaviours to each of the duties. And then we'll, we have to make sure that 
the off the job days are allocated to each of those duties. And over the course of the apprenticeship, the off the job days have to equal 20 percent, at least 20 percent of the employees working time or the apprentices working time. And as Kevin said earlier on, it doesn't mean that every Friday they have to have the day off. It's just over the course of the apprenticeship, it, the, the off the job, uh, the, the, the days when they're actually not doing their, uh, their, their role for which they're employed, 20 percent of it must be away from that. <clears throat> so it could be in the boardroom on a Zoom meeting. It could be higher, going home at three o'clock on, on two or three days a week, something like that, and doing some revision or going to the, the, the workplace canteen and putting their head in a book or something like that. That counts as off the job days, as long as they're not performing the, the duties of employment, i.e. probably in the payroll. Now, to justify that uh, the apprenticeship as a whole will allocate at least 20% off the job days. We've got to, as I said, allocate uh, the um, uh, uh, off the job days to the particular duties that we specify. And that is no mean feat, I can tell you. Absolutely no, uh, no mean feat. It's, it's a really, really quite a complicated uh, thing to do. Anyway, that's what we've got to do. That's a change that we've got to make. It wasn't necessary in the standard and it's not published in the standard, but it will be published in the new standard once level three review is completed. Then, as well as reviewing the standard, so basically what a payroll administrator does and the knowledge is skills and behaviours, <coughs> excuse me, that they have to have to fulfill the duties, the new requirement, we're going to look at endpoint as well. And with regards to endpoint, what's been really useful for, for myself and what will become really useful for the, for the trailblazer, and it's been great uh, feedback for my uh, relationship manager, is the feedback that I've got now that the apprenticeship has been live for three years. Now, there's apprenticeship training providers that have been delivering it for three years, and they've given me some great feedback. Well, this works well, this doesn't work well. Um, the same with endpoint assessment organisations. Well, this is assessed well, but this isn't assessed very, uh, very well. And you've got apprenticeship training, uh, uh, endpoint assessment organisations that maybe it's unclear how something should be assessed, or maybe it's ambiguous. So the feedback that we've received have been really good, and all of that feedback that, that we've received, I will pass on to the trailblazer and will adapt the endpoint assessment. So currently, the way that the um, uh, apprenticeship is assessed is via a knowledge test for two of the components, payroll and uh, payroll core and pensions for payroll is a test uh, uh, by a multiple choice knowledge test um, uh, asking a question four answers which one is right then there's a role simulation as well which uh, tests other uh, learning outcomes knowledge skills and behaviors so you've got in there things like manual calculations write to write to somebody why their ssp hasn't been paid write to somebody uh, and explain how their student loan is calculated something like that so testing a lot in the role simulation and then anything that isn't tested in the knowledge test and the role simulation will be tested in the wash up professional discussion so this is where the endpoint assessor will actually for the first time meet with the um, apprentice and say well how did you do this how do what happens at your workplace regarding this now the knowledge test each of them are very very distinct in, in their purpose the knowledge test is purely factual it's purely knowledge recall do you know it and can you demonstrate it in a multiple choice test the role simulation you've got to put us put aside the factual knowledge test bit the role simulation is assuming the role of a payroll administrator in a dummy company so the endpoint assessment organizations will have set up a dummy company so X Limited has two employees, one's paid 50,000, one's paid 7,000, one, one's pregnant, one's sick, one has a student loan, um, that kind of thing. Calculate the payroll for month one. Bill comes to you and says, well, how's, it, how's my student loan calculated? Write to him and tell him how his student loan was calculated. That's a, a dummy company, a fictitious company, and that's a requirement as per the endpoint assessment plan. When it comes to the professional discussion, however, you've got to put, a, put aside totally the knowledge recall from the knowledge test, totally put aside the dummy company from the role simulation. The professional discussion is only about what happens at the workplace, and that's very, very important, and that's where the uh, qualification all round becomes uh, an educational and a vocational qualification. 
education. So we're testing that they've got the education, but we're testing that they can apply that education and they do apply that education in the workplace. So that's how it currently exists. And we established those, or Trailblazer, myself, and Endpoint Assessment organisations established those right at the very start because we thought that they were, they were robust and appropriate for for the profession, for the apprenticeship, and importantly, they were were, were deliverable by the, deliverable by the Endpoint Assessment organisation. It was never any point us coming up with something some some crazy um, way of assessing if nobody could actually deliver it. So those were, were considered appropriate, robust and deliverable. And indeed, I think they still are. However, feedback has taught us possibly that um, things can change. So the trailblazer and I, or I will ask, be asking the trailblazer, are those things still relevant? Are those um, endpoint assessment methods still relevant in 2020, 2021? They were re relevant in two, uh, 2018. Are they still relevant in 2021? I will also be asking them, because uh, this is an, a number of um, input assessment, well, both input assessment organisations and ATPs have come back and said, well, the endpoint assessment period is currently three months. So uh, once they pass what's called gateway, uh, where the apprenticeship training provider says and the employer says, yeah, you're OK, you're absolutely fine. Now you can go forward to endpoint assessment. The current um, endpoint assessment plan says that it must be taken within three months. If it's not taken within three months and passed within three months, the apprentice has to go right back to the beginning. So I shall be asking the trailblazer, is the three month endpoint assessment period correct? And we'll be looking at level five because the endpoint assessment period in level five is four months and it's four months from a very specific date. So I think that needs to be reflected in the endpoint assessment plan for uh, level three. It doesn't make sense that you've got uh, one regime in level three and one regime in level five. They should be the same. But again, it's the trailblazer that will be deciding that. Oh, I've just said that, haven't I? And should the endpoint assessment methods that we've got be modified? So one of the, the um, things that apprenticeship training providers have come to me and apprentices themselves have said, um, the role simulation is currently three hours. This is the fictitious company, X Limited, with someone that's pregnant, someone's got a student loan and, and, and someone's got one leg. Um, should that be split? into two to make it less um, uh, taxing, if you like, when the, when the apprentice is taking it. Because I do understand that a three hour role simulation, which can actually be taken over a maximum of five, oh, just over five hours, is actually quite a stressful, uh, stressful situation. So should the role simulation be split? Now, another thing regarding the role simulation is, um, should we always be going for 100% accuracy in, in the role simulation? Because currently the, the input assessment plan says, yes, it must be 100% accurate. Well, maybe if we split the role simulation, we can have one part that's just to do with manual calculations, because the Trailblazer in 2018 felt very strongly that manual calculations should be able to be performed. Well, a manual calculation must be 100% accurate. There's no good saying to an employee, well, here's your pay and it's probably it's about 75% accurate. So the, the uh, role simulation as regards the manual calculation should be 100% accurate. But what about the rest of it, where you're testing the rest of the learning outcomes? Should only competence uh, be required there? So that's something that the Trailblazer and I have got to look at. And then the knowledge tests as well. And I did have an, a conversation with an apprenticeship training provider yesterday, because currently the endpoint assessment plan says um, it will be a mixture of factual, scenario-based and contextualised questions. Well, goodness, I mean, what a contextualised question is, is um, anybody's uh, anybody's guess. The, the, the difference between the contextualised and scenario-based is, so, is so fine. So maybe we'll consider um, endpoint assessment uh, organisations only have to provide a series of factual questions and scenario-based uh, questions and do away with contextualised just to make it clearer for endpoint assessment organisations. So we're not trivialising the, the apprenticeship, we're not trivialising endpoint assessment, we're just making it clearer and more robust. And I will um, <clears throat> uh, hurry through and 
I will say that obviously, if we're reviewing the standard and we're reviewing the endpoint assessment plan, we the, the funding band will be reviewed as well. And now the um, Institute have a new funding model, which is going to be released in the summer of, of this year. And apparently it's supposed to make the funding allocation process more transparent to all. And just be aware that I will liaise with apprenticeship training providers and apprenticeship uh, 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 um, uh, EPAOs for quotations at the appropriate time. Now, the funding band for level three is £9,000. Now, obviously, if it's being reviewed, it could stay the same, it could go down, or it could increase. So, really, what I'll, uh, I will need from ATPs and e e EPAOs, I don't think we want it to go down. We'd like it to go up. Um, but the very minimum, we'd like it to stay the same. So I want re robust and accurate quotations. So please, um, when I ask if you could do that, that would be terrific. Level five, uh, Kevin's really mentioned this, and it's a progression from level three, higher level, yeah, higher level qualification. And I think employers should be looking at that as well. There's a link uh, to it, looking at uh, the level five, as opposed to perhaps level five qualifications uh, that are um, commercial, commercial uh, qualifications. That's in the new format as well. The new format that I'm going to be um, uh, uh, changing level three to, that's got an £11,000 funding band allocation, probably due to the robustness of the quotes that I got. Yeah, the EPA uh, 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 process is slightly different as well. And Kevin also mentioned this as well. I think it would make sense that in the payroll profession, there's a level three, a, a progression to a level five, and then a progression to a level seven, a degree level. <clears throat> Before I leave the payroll profession, although I've got no intention of doing it immediately, I think I will do that. Yes, I will do that. That would be lovely to be able to leave the payroll profession and know that you've got a three, a five and a seven in place, which are equal to the commercial qualifications that are available. So the, uh, just to finish off now, the only thing that I would say is employers, please have a look at your job descriptions and maybe consider the apprenticeship as well as some of, some of the um, other commercial qualifications that are available. And the level five is being reviewed. It's going to be a long process, but it doesn't affect the apprentices are currently studying the way ATPs are currently teaching and APA are currently assessing. But it will change probably in 2022. Level five is available out there. And I will honestly keep the profession updated at every step of the way. So apprenticeship training providers that are asked to be kept updated, I communicate with them. The same with the endpoint assessment organizations. Here, here are my contact details. So please, honestly, do contact me at any time. Um, and I think it says on here, I'm always happy to, a chat, to chat apprenticeship. I don't know about I'm always happy. Um, but I honestly, because I believe apprenticeships are the future and it's been so good that the commercial trade, some of the commercial training companies are actually providing their training material to apprenticeship training providers. So that's encouraging to see. And Kevin, you'll be pleased to hear that I probably didn't talk for more than 20 minutes. That's all I've got to say. Any queries do come back to me. Thank you, Ian. Kevin, um, is that OK? Yeah, that's great. 